Hello, good morning, everybody. Guess what? I'm ready for the word this morning. I hope that you're ready. I'm ready to release what God has given me, and I pray that you are ready to receive it. Put in the chat, I'm ready to receive it. I'm ready to receive the word of God. Man, We live. I live. The Bible says in Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread only. We shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I know that people just but think that they live by the things of this world. No, we are living by every proceeding word, every word that is proceeding from out of the mouth of God. This is a daily bread. This is something every day I get up, Lord, what do you want to talk about today? Oh my God. So this is the type of daily bread that we need to be the men and the women that God has called us to be. So I want you to get ready for the impartation that's about to take place. I want you to get ready for the deposit that God is about to make into your heart. And it's about growing in grace. Put in the chat, I grow in grace. I grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So listen, if you're watching right now on Vimeo Live, call somebody, text somebody, tell them to jump on, tell them to share you know, this experience with us in the word of God. If you're watching on YouTube Live, and if you've never subscribed to the YouTube YouTube channel, you should do that. Go to youtube.com forward slash Rick Pina or open up your YouTube app and just type Rick Pina, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on YouTube right now, like and subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we go live, share the link. If you're watching on Facebook, we go live on, on three different Facebook pages. If you're on any one of those pages, just hit share right now. It's going to show up on your page. And your friends will be able to see it and they'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Or you can tag somebody. Like if the Holy Spirit puts somebody on your heart, go into the chat, put the at symbol of your friend's name, they'll be tagged and they'll be notified. If you're watching on X, retweet it. All right? Put in the chat, I grow in grace. I'm growing into the grace that is on my life. I grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So good morning, Ashiki. I see you're ready to receive. Good morning, Reginald. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Shakita. Uh... Yes, Jonathan's um, surgical procedure was successful. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. And also, um, same thing uh, I heard from Wanda, that things went well in Texas as well. So to God be the glory. I haven't heard from Monique yet, but we'll find out. Bianca, good morning. Tony Black, good morning. Jana, good morning. Uh, Barbara, good morning. What's up, Joe? You and Eve, good morning, good morning, good morning. Pamela, good morning. Uh, Rhonda, good morning. The Perrys, you know, I love you guys. Lisa, good morning. Uh, Tracy, good morning. Malisha, Wanda, Lisette, LaShawn, Charlie Mike, <laughs> Robert Hussey, Erica Golar. All right, listen, I love you guys. What's up, Miss Genia, Dr. Genia Anglin, uh, Yolanda, Ree, Barbara, Steve. What's up, Steve? You and Melody. All right, listen, I love you guys. I thank God for all of you. I appreciate you. We're about to pray. I'm about to pray for you. Can I pray for you? I'm about to pray for you. And then we're going to get into the word for this morning. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for the people that are watching right now, the Grace Life family. I lift you up over, over this word and I lift you up over them. I, for, I stand in the gap for them this morning. I, I don't know what they're going through, uh, but you know. And so help me to understand some of the things uh, that I need to pray for this morning. Father, so Father, yes, Lord. I'll do that. I pray for children. I pray for, for uh, parents that are concerned about their children. I pray, Father, that, that uh, you would help the parents see the children and their destiny the way that you do. Help us, because I'm a parent too. Help us to enter into your rest concerning our children. We lift up our children to you, and we decree a blessing over them. We, 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 we bless them. We empower them to prosper. We declare that their feet are bound to the path that you established for them from the foundations of the world. They will not be dismayed uh, by the things that are happening in this world, and they will not be swayed away from this purpose. I pray, Father, that our children are influencers, and, th and they're influencing others for righteousness, and they are not negatively influenced by the things of this world. I declare that our children walk in holiness, in righteousness, in virtue. I declare that our children are covered by the blood of your son, filled with your spirit and called according to your work plan and purpose. So I speak blessings over our children as our children go to school. I pray, Father, that they're able to process, digest, analyze, understand, comprehend everything as it relates to their education, that our children excel academically and socially 
in Jesus' name. They develop into who it is that you've called them to be. I lift up marriages to you uh, in this moment. I pray, Father, uh, that if there are any strained marriages or beyond that, even strained relationships, I pray, Father, that uh, that you would help the strained relationships that are outside of marriage, those relationships that you want to be strong but that are at, in this moment strained. I pray, Father, that there would be a level of humility and grace on both sides, that you would mend and restore broken relationships. As it relates to marriage, we come up against divorce and the thought of divorce and the spirit of divorce. The enemy comes in to steal and to kill and to destroy. So we pray, Father, for, for healing hearts, for mending souls. I pray, Father, that you would bless us to be a blessing one to another, that we would allow in marriages no corrupt communication to proceed from out of our mouths, but only that which is good to the use of edifying, that we may minister grace one to another, that wives would be submitted unto their own husbands, husbands submitted unto the Lord, and also submitted one to another, that they would build each other up, that husbands and wives will be each other's greatest supporters and closest friends. And so, and, and now, Father, for this word, as I transition into the word now, I speak your blessing over your word. Your word is already blessed. You have esteemed your word above your name. And so you watch over your word to perform it. As I release your word, and as you speak through my vocal cords, as you sound like a Dominican kid from Brooklyn this morning, I pray, Father, that your word goes forth and changes lives, encourages people. I declare, Father, that people, their eyes will look up and not down, forward and not backward. Those that are in a moment of despair or depressed about what they're dealing with, they, they will break out of that depression today through this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Say amen to that. Put in the chat, amen. You want to establish uh, you know, you, you want to set your faith in agreement with that. Now, the word amen means I agree. So put in the chat, amen. Put in the chat, I agree. I set my faith in agreement. All right. So now that that's out of the way, I can get into the word. If you haven't shared the message, uh, please do so. And once again, let me just say this. In a minute here, I'm going to say, hey, good morning. This is Rick Pena. And everything before that will get cut out when I put it on the podcast and when I put it on YouTube. So like for the enduring part of YouTube. So for you who watch live, you guys get something that they don't get. So I just want to thank you for watching live. I thank you for being part of the Grace Life family. Thank you for allowing me to pray for you on a daily basis. I love you. I thank God for you. Now I can get started. Is that all right? All right, here we go. Share the message if you haven't done so, and here we go. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 18th, 2024. I'm teaching a series this year on how to live with a laser focus on the fixed purpose that God has for you. Right now, I'm teaching about the life of Joseph. And today's message is a straightforward message. It's going to be a tremendous blessing to you. I guarantee it. Listen, the title of today's message is Grow Into Your Grace. Grow Into Your your grace. Put in the chat, I grow into my grace. There's a grace of God that is all my life and I grow into it. And when I, when I talk about mentorship and I'm talking to people uh, a lot of times that, that don't see themselves operating on a certain level and, uh, or it could be like, you know, they're a person of a disadvantaged background like me, like my wife. And God puts us in rooms that at first we feel terrified. Like, what am I doing in this room? I tell them that, first of all, you need to thank God for your mentors or sponsors that opened the door for you to get into that room. And then second of all, once you grow into, get into that room, you have to grow into the space. And that's kind of basically what I'm teaching today. There's a level of grace that is on your life for you to become the man or the woman that God has called you to be, but you have to grow into that grace. So say this, declare it by faith. I grow into my grace. I'm going to grow into the grace. I'm growing into becoming uh, the man or the woman that God has called me to be. Uh, I'm growing into it. I'm getting to the point where I'm ready to walk in the fullness of the divine assignment that is on my life. Say amen to that. Let's get ready for the word this morning. Open up your heart to receive.
all right, so I'm growing into this grace. I'm, there's a level of grace that is on my life, and I grow into it. Now, the foundational scripture that we've been looking at all year is Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 25. This is what it says from the Passion Translation. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. What we want to do is be so focused on the fixed purpose that God has for us that we will ignore life's distractions. I did tell you that while this year would be a year of purpose and focus, it would also be a year of many distractions. So put this in the chat. I will not be distracted. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. We've been looking at this every day as well as it relates to the life of Joseph, and this applies to us too. The Bible says this, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, you know what you could do? You could see it as an opportunity, as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. So if you're experiencing challenges and difficulties, James says, don't say, woe is me. No, say, woe is me. I see this as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that I can. Verse three says, for you know that when your faith is tested, it actually stirs up inside of you the power to endure all things. Put in the chat, I have the power to endure all things. And then verse four says, and as your endurance grows stronger, it releases something inside of you. You know what it releases? Perfection. Another translation says maturity. It releases maturity. It releases perfection, which reminds me of yesterday's message about what it looks like to be mature. If you haven't watched that message, go back and watch that. Talking about endurance, talking about maturity, but it releases perfection. What? The, the, the testing of my faith releases maturity and perfection into every part of my being until, watch this, the text says, there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. Say that. There is nothing missing and nothing lacking in my life. Why? Because I'm mature. How did I get there? I endured. I, I endure hardship as a good soldier in Christ Jesus. Genesis chapter 39, beginning at verse 21, the Bible says, the Lord was with Joseph and continued to show kindness to him. This is in the prison. So the commander of the prison guards began to like Joseph. God will cause people to like you, right? The commander of the prison guards put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. Joseph was their leader. He still had to do work as well because he was still a prisoner. And the commander of the prison guards trusted Joseph with everything that was in the prison. And this happened because the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord helped Joseph be successful in everything that he did. So when he got to Potiphar's house, all of a sudden, not too long, the grace of God, God was with Joseph. Joseph ran the whole house, the whole property. Why? Because the Lord was with Joseph. Now he got to the prison. What happened? The favor of God is on Joseph. What happened? Now he's running the whole prison. Why? Because the Lord was with Joseph and the Lord caused Joseph to be successful in everything that he did. Let that be your confession. Come on now. Say, the Lord is with me and the Lord causes me to be successful in everything I do. All right. So what does this mean for you today? I have four things to share with you in this morning. Let's get into it. Four things. Number one, here we go. The power of embracing the process. The power of embracing the process. This is power that can come when you embrace the process. Joseph never went to Bible college. Joseph did not attend seminary. He didn't even have a Bible to read, but all he had was a dream. He had a dream that came from God. And no matter what he went through, no matter how long it took, Joseph was not going to let go of that dream. And that's how we're supposed to live. That's the type of endurance we have to have. He ultimately, Joseph did, laid hold of the dream. Ultimately, the dream that God gave him, where his brothers were bowing down before him, it came to pass. But it came to pass over more than two decades. This is why we need faith and patience. One of the things that we can learn from Joseph is not only the requirement or the mentality to endure, but he never got bitter along the way, right? He never developed a bitter attitude. Now, let, let me make sure that you understand what I'm saying. It took over 20 years, in his case, about 22 years for the dream to come to pass. Now, in, in the United States, especially today, Christians in the United States of America are so comfortable that if... God gives them a word on Sunday, and they get excited. I'm talking about it took 22 years. Most people today can't last 22 days. 
<laughs> like, I mean, like, like if you if you get if, if your girlfriend gets a word on Sunday and she's so excited about it that she called you and she can't stop talking about it, call her 22 days later. Chances are that 22 days later, she may not even remember what she said to you that God said to her, right? So what you want to do is you want to lay hold of this promise. And while you're waiting on it, don't ever get bitter. People give up on God because they get bitter. People give up on God because when things take a turn for the worse and things get worse before they get better, people say, well, maybe it wasn't the will of God. Oh, maybe that wasn't God. Oh, maybe, you know, whatever. And then they give up. And, and, and that's it because people today, it's like this microwave society and everybody wants it. And they want it now. I want patience, but I want it now. That's not how it works with God. Joseph had to endure. When, when we read that he was at Potiphar's house and then he was in the prison, I don't want you to think that this was like a couple of days. He was in Potiphar's house for years. He was in the prison for years between Potiphar's house, between being sold as a slave and Potiphar's house and the prison. That was 13 years. So I, I don't want you to think like this was like a couple of hours or something. No, 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 no. This, this was a process that took years. At Potiphar's house, he was there for years and he had to learn some things that he was not going to learn when he was in his father's house. And when he got to the prison, he was there for years. And while he was there for years, he had to learn some things that he wasn't learning at Potiphar's house. And so um, what I'm saying is that the journey is important. You can't get bitter. You actually have to get bigger. <laughs> so instead of getting bitter, sometimes I say, Instead of getting bitter, get better. No, what I'm saying today is instead of getting bitter, you need to get bigger. You need to grow into the grace, grow into your assignment, grow into who it is that God has called you to be. Know that you are actually being prepared. You have to have a mindset that, that not only am I going to heaven someday, but I'm going to maximize the purpose and the potential that God placed inside of me while I'm in the land of the living and I'm going to enjoy the ride and I'm going to enjoy the journey. Put in the chat, I will enjoy the journey. Why? Because I'm not going to get bitter. I'm going to get better. So what does this mean? Here's some, some things we can learn from this first point. The first thing we can learn is that every season counts. When he was at home, he learned some stuff. When he was at Potiphar's house, he learned some stuff. When he was in the prison, he learned some stuff. And all of that was required. God is using every season of your life. Every season counts. God is using every season of your life, even the challenging ones, right? Even the challenging seasons. Actually, you could probably make the argument that the challenging seasons are even more integral or integral to, to who it is that you know, the, the development of who it is that God has called you to be. You need to go through whatever you have to go through in order to become who it is that God has called you to become. And watch this. You have to learn in every season, even learning in the lows. Put in the chat, I learn in the lows. God uses both highs and lows to teach you. God uses both highs and lows to prepare you. Joseph learned some stuff in a low season as a slave. He learned some stuff in a low season as a prisoner. So you need to learn even in the lows. And your attitude, especially in adversity, it matters. Instead of becoming bitter when you have a setback or things are taking longer than you want it, what you want to do is get bigger and get bigger in faith and in grace and in knowledge and in understanding, knowing that the, that the process must be you must matriculate through the process before you can get the promotion. The process comes before the promotion. Accept the fact that God can promote you whenever he, he deems that you're ready, right? The promotion, you think you're waiting on God. God is waiting on you to get ready. Now, once you get ready, then get ready because it can happen at any time. But just know that the process precedes the promotion. You have to learn things. You have to endure hardships. You have to uh, remain humble and trust God and know that this is all part of the process. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the journey. Don't get, don't get upset with it. Know that the journey is important, not just the destination. While you're going through whatever you're going through, know that this is all part of the package. So while get, God gives you the grace to do what he's calling you to do, the grace life. While God gives you the grace, you have to grow into that grace. So put in the chat, I grow into this grace. There's a grace of God that's on my life and I'm growing into it. All right, number two, being processed for your calling requires mental discipline. This is what I thought about this morning. A lot of times I'm sharing with you something that as soon as I got up, I thought about it and I spoke into my phone. This is what I spoke into my phone this morning. The mental discipline required to make the most of your now 
while you're waiting on your next is easier said than done. Now, this is personal to me right now because there's some things that I know that God spoke to me about that haven't happened yet. And there's some things that I know God spoke to me about that are actually are supposed to happen right now in this season, like April 2024, but they haven't happened yet. And I was just looking this morning and I'm like, oh my God, we're already at, today's the 18th. And, 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 and I'm like 18 days into that. So what do I do? I have to get up every morning and I have to decree and declare and believe and receive that God is going to do what he said he was going to do, even though uh, uh, these days are going by and it's not happening. So the mental discipline that is required for you in real life to like, I could say, oh, trust the process. I can say, embrace the process. I can say, grow into the grace. Those are sayings and it's easy to say, but in real life, for you to get up every morning and to have the mental discipline and the spiritual fortitude that is required to know that, man, I got to do this thing right now, even though I know what God has called us to do is greater than what I'm going through right now. For you to have the discipline of knowing that, that what's inside of you is greater than what's around you, and you still can have to be faithful to, to, to carry out the duties of the now while you're waiting on the next. That is easier said than done. Joseph had mental discipline to be in Potiphar's house and said, I'm going to be faithful over this, even though I know that what I'm called to do is greater than this. When he got to the prison, instead of being upset with God, he had to have mental discipline to know, okay, well, what do I need to do now? I'm going to have the discipline to do what I'm supposed to do now, knowing that there's something greater. Listen, this type of discipline is uncommon, but I want you to know that there is uncommon grace on your life right? This, your calling requires uncommon discipline, but there's also uncommon grace. So put on the, in the chat, I walk in uncommon grace. Not only does God give you the favor and the power and the wisdom and all of that, but God gives you the grace. God gives you the grace for mental fortitude. God gives you the, the grace required to execute your present duties, dealing with present circumstances, while at the same time, never giving up on the glory that's coming next. While at the same time, I can never get up, give up. So what do I learn from this point? Okay, you got to learn to see past your now. Put in the chat, I see past my now. I cultivate the ability to maintain a focus on God's promises, even when current conditions seem to contradict my destiny. <laughs> When current condition, conditions seem to contradict my destiny, I have to see past my now. I need to maintain hope in the horizon. So put that in the chat. I have hope in the horizon. I see past my now. I'm never going to let go of the vision that God placed in my heart. No matter how difficult it gets, no matter, no matter how many present barriers there seem to be, no, many, no matter how many setbacks I have to overcome and endure. Listen, your current prison phase may be preparing you for your palace phase. So you got to get through it and you got to stay focused. You have grace for the moment. Say that. Say, I have grace for the moment. I want you to know that you have grace for the moment. Understand that God is equipping you, not just with spiritual endurance for practical victories uh, for, for, for the long haul, but you, you can do it now. I have practical daily victories. I have the grace to experience victory every day. I have the grace to focus on my now. I have the grace to go through with it. I have the grace to send the email. I have the grace to do the follow-up. I have the grace to do the phone call. I have the grace to go to the, like, I have the grace to keep doing like every day, being disciplined every day, all the things I need to do every day. I have the grace for it. Why? Because I'm developing this type of mindset that will enable me to operate with fortitude over feelings. Put in the chat, I have fortitude over feelings. I have the mental toughness that is required to focus on my present duties while at the same time keeping the hope alive for future glory. That's not easy. I'm focusing on my present duties while at the same time I, I keep my hope alive for future glory. Why? Because I know that I grow through what I go through. But put in the chat, I grow through what I go through. And so I, I grow through what I, what I go through. And so what I'm going through is helping me to grow. It's helping me to develop. It's helping me to become the man or the woman that God has called me to be. And then let me tell you this right here. I love this point. Then you need to be ready. 
You need to be ready for your suddenlies. Like, like uh, suddenly, like it can happen at any time. One of the, the five words in the Bible I love is when I'm reading the Bible and th this person was enduring, this person was waiting, this person was believing, this person was praying. And then the Bible says, and it came to pass. Woo, glory to God. And it came to pass. I love when I read, and it came to pass. In the book of Rick Pina, listen, there's a lot of moments when it says, and it came to pass that God did what he said he was going to do. You know what I'm saying? You got to be ready for those suddenly. Put in the chat, just put the word suddenly. I mean, it can happen in a moment. It can happen just like that. Suddenly, somebody came and said, hey, get ready. Pharaoh wants to see you. And that day, he got promoted from prisoner to prime minister. So while you're going through what you're going through, you got to be ready for these sudden shifts that God can shift you and he can do it in a moment. He can do it in just like that. God can turn a situation around suddenly. Say amen to that. Number three. Say amen. Come on. All right. Number three, you have to grow into your life's assignment. God calls you into this great assignment, your life's assignment. And it was something that he decided like before the world began. Uh, and that, But when you're born, you're born ignorant of those plans. I told you this like a gazillion times. So you're born ignorant of the plans that God made for you from the foundations of the world. And, and then God sends people your way to tell you about Jesus. And then you get born again. And then once you're born again, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Then once the Holy Spirit is inside of you, he begins to give you glimpses of the future that he planned for you, that God planned for you. That's your assignment. That's your destiny. That's your purpose. And the more clear you can see the glimpses, the, the stronger the pull. Say this, say my calling is calling me. And so, so it's like your purpose, the vision is pulling you into your destiny. And the more clear I can see the vision, the stronger the pull. So, so now, not only is God calling me and pulling me into my future, but he's given me the grace to walk in it. He's given me the grace to do it. He's given me the grace to do what I could never do without him. Why? He's, he's stored up this grace. Everything that I need to become the man or the woman that God has called me to be is stored up for me in my divine account in heaven. And it's going to be released to me at just the right time. So God calls you to do these things that you could not do without him. God then gives you the grace to do what you cannot do without him. And so you have to yield to him, trust in him, believe in him, submit to him, right? You can't do it in your natural strength. And so God calls you to do things that you can't do without him. God calls you to walk into rooms and operate in these rooms that you don't have the education or the experience for. God calls you to fund projects that you don't have the money for. And then, then watch this. And then once you start operating in that room, God, you got into that room at first and you were terrified. Now you've grown into the space. Once you mastered one level, God opens up the door to the next level and you start the process all over again. And so, so you, you, God is not going to let you be comfortable. Once Joseph mastered Potiphar's house, he was like, you got to go to jail now. And once he mastered the jail, he was like, now you go to the palace now. And so you, once you master one level, God will open up the door to the next level because God is never going to allow you to get too comfortable right? Uh, listen, God, there's a certain level of discomfort that is required to walk with God. And so what God does is God takes you to this level. You master it. God takes you to the next level. When you get to that level, now I'm relying on God again. And then when I get too comfortable because I know how to operate on this level, God says, no, now go do this other thing where I have to rely on God again. And then once I master that, and if I ever get too comfortable and I'm not really relying on God, God says, nope, now go to this other thing and I have to rely on God again. And God keeps this process going. Why? That's how I I become the man or the woman that God has called me to be. That's how I evolve. That's how I grow into the grace. That's how I keep my heart conditioned to rely on God, believe in him, trust in him. And there's nothing that I can't do. Why? Because God is on me, in me, with me, and for me. But this process is a lifelong process of growing, learning, developing, getting to the next level. Say amen to that. All right, number four, let me give you the last point as I let you go. Since your development takes time. You got to learn how to be patient. I know, I know we don't like to use the word patient, but God calls you. God calls you into your future from your present. And when he does, you really don't understand the enormity of the call. And you have no idea how much processing is going to be required in order to get there. But you got to be patient. In Joseph's life, we see a good example. God gave him a glimpse. The glimpse came in a dream. The dream was like, okay, I can see the dream. He had no idea of the processing that was going to be required for, for him to become the man that God called him to be for that dream to come to pass. He had no idea what was going to happen in those 22 years, but he endured it and he had to become patient. 
And so he went through every phase, the parent phase, the pit phase, the Potiphar phase, the prison phase. In the end, he got to the palace phase. If you are patient, you're going to get there too. So as I close, I want you to know, watch this. Uh, let me encourage you this morning as I close. Look at me. God is still working in your life. Yes, the promise may have, has at this moment, taken longer than you expected. I'm preaching to myself too, right? Yes, you've had to endure more things than you wanted to endure. Yes, you've had to overcome more challenges than you wanted to overcome. Yes, you've had to wait longer than you wanted to wait. But listen, let me tell you, you're getting closer. Let me, let me speak to you. You are getting closer. Every step, every stage, every level, every phase, every challenge, every victory, you're getting closer. You are, so please be patient. Greater is coming for you because you are called to greatness and you are growing into it. Say that. Say, I am called to greatness and I am growing into it. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, your timing is perfect. I trust in your plans and purposes. I commit to making the most of every season. I declare that I grow through what I go through. <laughs> so I'm being prepared for the next level. I'm thankful for your grace. You enable me to do what I could never do without you. I keep my focus on your promise and I will not be swayed. I'm also open for the suddenlies that will come into my life. I affirm that every phase is part of my story, so I'm going to enjoy the ride. You have given me the grace to do what I'm called to do, and I'm growing into that grace. So I boldly declare, greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name, amen. Now this is today's word. Tomorrow I'm going to have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, please go to todaysword.org. If you're not getting my notes, why would you not sign up? Get my notes for free. Todaysword.org. Click on the big, big red subscribe button at the top right. Put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. Three things. Number one, leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. I'd like to read those comments. Number two, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. And then number three, pay attention to this video as I close. If our ministry is a blessing to you, please consider becoming a partner with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Not only will you support the Word of God going out on a daily basis, but you will also support our school in the Dominican Republic, where we are providing 200 Haitian children a Christ-based education free of charge and also a hot meal every day. If you want to become a partner with us, go to ripministries.org and you'll be able to do so there. If you don't have any of my materials, well, let me just show you a few things. Well, this is my first book, Level Up Your Life, where I cover how to level up your life in five areas of your life. Here's Grace-Based Success. It's a daily devotional where in 28 days, you'll be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's two affirmations books, one for men and one for women. These books will help you to align your faith, your heart, and your lips with the word of God, or just go to rickpina.co. You'll see all the books there, apparel. Please make yourself available to those materials. They will be a blessing to you. Lastly, Isabella and I have been committed to coaching and mentorship for many, many years. And the Lord led me to use a platform where I could do it online, where we could leverage ourselves and scale. So now we have over 600 videos and continuing to grow. We're recording videos on a weekly basis where we're covering how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and how to be successful as a Christian and in business and with relationships and etc. So if you're interested in that, please go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. You will be blessed. Thank you for being a blessing to us and we pray that we will continue to be a blessing.